brother and lads, welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. This early morning, Arsenal have beaten Orlando City three goals to one in the USA. Now Arsenal have won four out of four of their preseason games and two out of two of our games in the USA. BT Everton. 2-0 in our first game in the USA Tour and now Orlando City 3-1. We're going to be diving into the key points of the game and also my reaction. I think it is time for Gabriel Martinelli adding Ketia to shine this season. Martinelli absolutely magnificent. Ketia man of the match and of course Martinelli and Ketia again onto the score sheet with Rhys Nelson. I want you to talk to me about Rhys Nelson in the comment section. Does he deserve another chance with his Arsenal side this season? Because Mikel Arteta is choosing him very, very consistently. And uh, I'm thinking, is he going to give him some game time come next campaign? What do you think about Rhys Nelson? And what did you make of our performance, Gunas? We, ha we have now won four out of four out of, of our preseason games now this summer. Now, the starting lineup, Mikel Arteta decided that he was not going to go out very, very strong. He started with Aaron Ramsdale in goal. Nuno Tavares, Pablo Mari, Rob Holding, and Cedric Suarez in the back four. Rob Holding was the captain uh, of the team. Ainsley Martin now started in the midfield pivot. Mohamed El Neni as well. Gabriel Martinelli on the left squad for us in the first half. Albert Sambilakonga as your number 10. Can you imagine that? Nicola Pepe started on the right instead of Bukayo Saka. And Edin Ketia started up front as the lone striker. So it was a 4-2-3-1 system. Where Mikel Arteta decided that uh, he's going to try out a new, th you know, a, a couple of new things. Nicola Pepe starting vis-a-vis uh, -vis Gabriel Martinelli on either wing. Albert Samblokong as a number 10. I think that was quite bizarre. I've not seen uh, Albert, uh, Albert Samblokong play uh, that advanced that in, in that creative role. Uh, but he played there in the first half. And of course, uh, Ainsley Martinaus and Mohamed Elneny. I want your thoughts on Ainsley Martinaus because for me, he needs to actually leave Arsenal Football Club. In my opinion, I think the only players in that first half uh, that actually are worth starting for Arsenal are Aaron Ramsdale, a Aaron Ramsdale, Mohamed El Neni, Matt Nelly, and Edin Ketia. The rest, uh, the rest of them, apart from Abbe Samilakonga, who I think should be sitting on the bench, the rest of them should actually be gone. But in the first half, it was quite a tussle to uh, to stay in the game. We had uh, a 50-50 game where you had Orlando, uh, Orlando City trying to create some chances. By the way, they scored a very, very be uh, beautiful goal. Facundo Torres uh, scored for them a very, very beautiful goal uh, after Gabriel Martinelli had put Arsenal ahead with a deflected shot. So... It was quite. It was quite uh, a balanced game in the first half because Arsenal don't put in their first uh, their first team players and the quality um, in that first half was not actually uh, impressive. And you saw it when we came into the second half. If you, know, if, if you didn't watch the game, the second half was quite very very clear of the first half. Martin, uh, Martin Odegaard coming in, in you know, boosting the creativity. Uh, Thomas Partey boosting the solidity, uh, you know, solidifying uh, the midfield. Uh, you know, there Bukayo Saka, uh, you know, increasing the the intensity uh, of the game coming in for uh, for Nicola Pepe. It was completely a very very different game. It was a very very different game. Uh, you know, all together in the second half. So I I, I picked up a couple of points uh, to talk about uh, on the morning or in or, or, or on the you know on the night. As as we were beating Orlando City, and these are some of them. First and foremost, I think we need to sell many of these players uh, that um, uh, started in the first half. Mikel Arteta has spoken about it uh, in his press conference after the game. We'll look at that in the next video. And he said, uh, some of the players, we're going to be very, very frank with them, uh, they are going to be... Uh, they're gonna need to have to, to have to move on. We're going to need to offload a couple of players. And on, uh, on and honestly, lads, when I look at that first stuff and the players that started, uh, I think Nicola Pepe is going to need to be sold. I think Ainsley Martinez will need to be sold. Uh, Nuno Tavares needs to go out on loan. Pablo Mari needs to be sold. Rob Holding probably needs to be sold as well. Um, and Cedric Suarez. If Arsenal can find um a very good right back. Cedric Suarez needs to go. So a, a lot of these players cannot be part of our squad. A lot of these players cannot be part of our uh, of, of our second team. Because at some point in time, you will need your second team. You will need the squad depth. And I don't think they really give us the real picture uh, of 
good squad depth of good players uh, to sit and wait for their chance to sit on the bench um, as, as as the likes of Thomas Partey start. Because the problem that uh, the, the problem that I saw is there is a massive a, a massive quality um, you know jump between our first team and our second team. If the likes of Nicola Pepe, if the likes of um, uh, Ainsley Matanaus cannot beat Orlando City convincingly, if we need to pull out the big guns, the the, the strong team, uh, in order to get past uh, to get past Orlando City, there is a question there. So for me, the past the first point I looked at there was um, a couple of these players, a cu and many of these players need to leave Arsenal Football Club and we need to do a very good job in terms of um, you know in, in terms of selling this summer. The second point Alexander Zichenko was watching uh, from the stands and I think this really got many Arsenal fans uh, very very excited. He was sitting alongside uh, alongside Edu. Mikel Arteta of course has been speaking about that transfer um, uh, this morning. I'll take I'll give you the details of, of that in the second video as well. But uh, Alexander Zichenko was in the stands watching the uh, the transfer needs to complete a few formalities medicals completed he was there watching was he was unable to uh, get into the side probably to get involved but in this chelsea game we highly anticipate that uh, alexander zichenko will be playing uh, with arsenal football club now the other point i picked out as well was our quality in the first team our quality um in the starting team and i think this is a very very quality point we need uh, we, we are getting there we need to realize that arsenal are getting closer and closer to that quality that we're actually wanting that we're actually uh, asking for we have started seeing that there is a huge difference when arsenal start uh, off with the likes of uh, of pepe um of uh, ainsley of um uh, of edin ketia and there's a huge difference between our starting 11 now the quality and our second 11 when you look at the second 11 you think you're only one or two players away from having a really quality side i think apart from um, apart from the left wing where i can introduce probably a player like Leroy sane uh, there is no other area where i'm very very concerned there uh, there are no there are not very many areas in the first team uh, where you're going to be concerned and i think we saw it yesterday the moment Mikel Arteta unleashed the powers um of the first team everything absolutely turned to gold. Thomas Partey bossing the midfield. Martin Odegaard creating chances here and there. Uh, Bukayo Saka setting up Rhys Nelson as well. Um, you know, for that goal. And it was absolutely very, very beautiful. Our work now in the next coming seasons and transfer windows is going to be, can we raise the level of our squad uh, depth to also uh, reach that of Manchester City, Liverpool, uh, and, and probably Chelsea, and probably Manchester United as well. Because... If, if you take off Ma Gabriel Martinelli uh, and you bring in probably L Leroy Sane, that makes a lot of sense. If you take off uh, a party and you introduce an Ibrahim Sangare, that makes a lot of sense. If you take off Martin Odegaard and you have Fabio Vieira waiting, that actually makes a lot of sense. So our quality of the first team, I'm really, really impressed. We are becoming very, very uh, impressive. If, can, if we can keep our players very fit, if we can keep them of injury out of the sick pay i think we're having a very quality uh, starting 11 and we can actually start thinking about competing now the other point i uh, i looked at is um aaron ramsdale and his performance absolutely top top quality performance very very quality goalkeeper uh there i love the leadership what i love about aaron ramsdale is the leadership again yesterday he was a uh, very very you know very very fond of making the serves um and he made sure that arsenal did not go a goal down before half time they, uh, i think orlando city had a very very quality chance to make it 2-1 uh but aaron ramsdale standing very strong very good positioning is one of the things i love about him his positioning is absolutely very, very good. So, again, Aaron Ramsdale, I, I, I looked at him when we conceded, and I said, this guy is a leader. This guy must be part of the leadership hierarchy at Aston Football Club. There is nothing, there is no point you can tell me against that. He must be part of... Um, you know, he must be part of our uh, leadership hierarchy. If um, Martin Odegaard is captain, then Aaron Ramsdale must be second captain or third captain you know when we considered everyone 
you know, put their heads, uh, you know, put put their heads down uh, in Insham. And Aaron Ramsdale told them, guys, get your fucking selves up. Stop sleeping and wake up. Because the way we considered that goal, it was more like the backline was sleeping. Of course, the quality in that backline um, is, in, is, is um, inexcusable. Pablo Mari, Rob Holding, Nuno Tavares, uh, and Cedric Suarez. The quality was absolutely bizarre. But that is no point to concede cheap goals against Orlando City. That is no point to get ripped apart uh, by Orlando City. So, Aaron Ramsdale trying to make them focus, trying to tell them, lads, you need to focus. And um, the other point, lads, Gabriel Martinelli, Edin Ketia, it is their time to shine now. I think this season, we're going to be seeing more of Gabriel Martinelli shining. We're going to be seeing more of uh, Edin Ketia uh, shining. Edin Ketia, that goal was very, very number nine like. Very, very number nine like. And um, I, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna be very honest. I love the celebration uh, with him and uh, you know with him and Gabriel Assist, uh, You know uh, that you know the telephone. I really, really loved it. But to be honest, I think the key point there, lads, is uh, Gabriel Martinelli and Edin Ketia are going to be the next big thing at Arsenal this uh, this season. I reckon Gabriel Martinelli is going to explode. And I also reckon uh, Edin Ketia is going to explode as well. He's a player that I didn't actually believe in until Mikel Arteta gave him a chance. And finally, I can now start seeing what Mikel Arteta sees um, in the man. So, I mean, those are the points that I actually saw in that game. Uh, very, very good performance in the second half. Mikel Arteta tried out a few, a couple of things. And this is the beauty uh, of preseason. You try out a couple of things. You try to see if Albert Sambilakonga can be used as a number 10. One day, you try, out, uh, you, you try to see whether it is time for, for Nicola Pepe to get a second chance. But you know what? Nicola Pepe, I don't think he's coming back. I don't think there is a way back for Nicola Pepe in this Arsenal side. Even yesterday, when Mikel Arteta decided he will give him a chance to lead the line, Pepe is done. Pepe at Arsenal is done. Not in preseason, not in the Europa League, not anywhere. He is absolutely done. Mikel Arteta Edu, get him out. If Sevilla can give us 15 million, if Ribetis can give us 3 million in Hexa Bellerin, I will take that money and run. You know, because one of my points here is uh, is about the squad depth. And I think Pepe, Bellerin, Ainsley, that is no squad depth. I'm telling you, lads, those guys are no squad depth and no quality squad depth. The moment we lose our first players to injury, to uh, probably a burnout, and you introduce Ainsley and you introduce Pepe, we are done for. So Arsenal really need to work on that point uh, of squad depth. I think it is really, really crucial. Uh, so if you look at the statistics uh, in the game la uh, last night, Arsenal averaged 20 shots on goal. Can you believe that? 20 shots on goal. That is impressive. That is quite very, very impressive. And uh, that uh, and uh, uh, 12 of those were actually on target. So 20 shots uh, in, the f uh, in the full 90 minutes. 12 of them on target that means uh, our you know our accuracy was actually good on the uh, on the evening um, then you think about uh, the passing uh, the uh, not, not not the passing accuracy really but um the ball position um Orlando City really gave us gave us a run for our money they gave us a run for our money because if you look at that pass uh, that position uh, you know position 58% Arsenal 42% Orlando City. It shows you there were no easy opening. But finally, we have beaten them uh, this morning. And I think Chelsea is next. Chelsea is coming up next. We can beat them. We can beat Chelsea. We can also beat uh, We can also beat Sevilla. I want us to have a 100% winning record in this uh, um, you know, in this preseason. And I think we can do it.